time for that visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, early 1999, I was asked to um, speak at some, uh, some workshops and lectures that they had in Hotchkiss, Colorado, and then at the UFO Institute of Colorado, which is located in Pueblo. And uh, my health wasn't really all that great, so we wasn't sure if I was going to make this trip or not. But as it turned out, um, at the very last minute, with the help of quite a few people and some of your viewers, I was able to um, undertake a, a really quick trip to Colorado for that purpose. Um, I was gone for 15 days, and because I wasn't feeling well, and um, I have a very good friend, and uh, she's my guest today. Her name is Tammy Bauer. Hi, Tammy. Hi, How Lily. are you? Yeah. Great. Uh, so, uh, Tammy had had an injury, a work-related injury, so she was um, recovering from that, mm -hmm. and so she was able to go with me. They said it was good for you, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. My therapist thought it would be good to go. Mm -hmm. So between the two of us, we were almost one whole person, were we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so Tammy was nice enough to go with me, and so we wanted to share some places and uh, people that we met on this trip that we took to Colorado um, real quick, like I said, in 15 days. Um, the other thing that happened, um, Tammy was supposed to be my camera person. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not riding with anybody, remember? Right. Yeah. So the deal was made that I drive and you film. Right. Well, because of Tammy's injury in her shoulder, that didn't work out at all did it no I couldn't hold the camera that's right and so if you recognize the cropper in our little trip that's because uh, it just so happened I had footage of all the places we went to from a previous year and um, you had a nice truck that we went in yes we did mm -hmm. was comfortable mm -hmm. was a, a big challenge we was going to take the cropper and then at the last minute we decided we could take the truck. So. We did. <laughs> and you might want to tell the friends, uh, because we didn't have to crop her, what, what happened? Well, we ran into a lady named Carol. Yeah, well, eventually we did. But you can tell the truth. Um, I bitched all the way, didn't I? Oh, yes. Every 10 minutes, Every I heard, <laughs> I missed my cropper. I, I missed, missed my cropper. cropper. OK. So we're going to leave that sort of as a cliffhanger for you. And what we thought we would do um, is show you an insert that we put together from uh, two years of travels and um, kind of talk you through that. And so you have an idea and can put a face on the places that we went to. Mm -hmm. And um, I made myself some notes so I remember where we went. Okay. And so if you give me a hand with that. Okay. And so when, whenever they're ready, they can start playing that clip. Okay. Mm -hmm. We left at four in the morning. Mm -hmm. You were bright and early. Yeah, mm -hmm. on time. Were you nervous? Was I nervous mm -hmm. about going on the trip? Mm -hmm. Oh no, I wasn't nervous. I was because was you? no because cropper. again no cropper. <laughs> you know, I didn't know yeah. how we was gonna do this, and so the first west area we came to, we put um, we put things on on the truck and off we went. Mm -hmm. So one of the first places we stopped at was Starvation Creek mm -hmm. uh, in, in Oregon and it was a beautiful place. It had, um, um, well, I, uh, here we go. This is, this is Starvation Creek in Oregon. It's right outside of um, Hoodsport. We, what's the name of the bridge we passed there? Oh, geez, I don't remember what it was. Golden some kind of, I, I'm sorry, some kind of golden bridge that we came, we crossed over from the Washington side. Oh, the Bridge of the Gods. The Bridge of the Gods. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's what it was. And then this is still, um, this is still Oregon there, and we're just driving along with our little teddy bear in the window there. And um, uh, we didn't catch too much rain, did we? No, mm -hmm. not on the way. I think we need to speak a little louder. Okay. That might be a little helpful. It's so, so tranquil and very few clouds. And um, 
Of course, the truck was a lot better on gas than the crop would have been. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So you were happy about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had reservations in Hotchkiss, Colorado. There were, how many people do you think were there? About 60, 70? Uh, probably about 60, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is right on the outskirts of um, Idaho. Now we got a real quick Idaho story for you. Yes. It took us how many hours to get to Idaho? I believe it was eight or nine hours. Eight or nine hours. We just couldn't get out of Idaho. And wow, there's a beautiful rainbow. So it must have rained somewhere along the line. I don't remember. It could be an old clip. And uh, it just took us forever to get out of Idaho. And we'll tell you a story about that uh, when we get through with these inserts. Isn't that beautiful? That's a windy place, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the west area in Idaho we came to. It was very, very windy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lots of birds. Um, I had been there in previous years where you can just, it's a refugee, uh, I mean a refuge. This is the Snake River. And this is still part of the, the west area. And then, oops, we jumped to Wuppet just that quick, Wuppet, Idaho. We had found crop circles there uh, the year before, in that field right there. And so, of course, we stopped in there. There's some of the people, they were nice, huh? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can buy almost everything there. There's an RV park. Um, you can rent movies. And, um, and they sell my book, by the way. And then the next place we're going to is towards Boise, Idaho. That particular spot, we were just leaving a rest area and we had spotted that, that UFO. So we pulled off before we got on the freeway and we got to see that. And it continued to get smaller and smaller. It doesn't show on here, but on the top and the bottom of this cigar-shaped UFO, it was blue ruffles. Yeah, it was, uh, was your first one, wasn't it? My first one to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then of course I drive and I look up all the time, so pretty much it um, tells me look up and there's a visitor. And that was the first one we had. And of course, Tammy was real excited about that. And I think we stay excited every time we see one, you know. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And then about, what, 30 miles down the highway. We saw another one. Was yeah. another one, yeah. But we'll wait a minute, and then I'll let you describe the other one. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. And if you notice, the tail does not disappear. I mean, it, it doesn't linger, so we know it's not an airplane. And, uh, wow, isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you have a blue sky like that, there's just no mistake in it. And then they take off the way they do, boom, they're just gone, you know. It was pretty large to start with, and then mm -hmm. it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. Until it was flipped and it was gone. Yeah, at one time there was a truck in view, and. Now this is the second one. You were driving. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you, you the one that looked at it, so you said it was, so can you describe it? Well, it has the long tail there. It's kind of, it's a triangle shaped. And I did try to get it in as best I could. I kind of went back and forth with the camera, but you could see the smoke behind it. Mm -hmm. And then right before it left, a light came on the very bottom, and it ended up making two when it was it mm -hmm. descended. Yeah. And then this is in Salt Lake City. This is a friend of mine, Steve, and uh, I don't know the, um, I believe the lady's name is, uh, oh, gee. Uh, Marianne, not, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Maymay, that's who that is. He has a didgeridoo farm there, and he makes didgeridoos. 
and ensouls them in also beautiful drums, and I've made reference to him before in, in Ocean Salt Lake City. And uh, we pretty much stopped at the major cities and yeah. called the people we know. Yeah. So they had put on a little concert, but that was the year before, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, you remember that place? It's the rest area. Okay, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, where they, they, the Navajos were selling jewelry, and it was a beautiful little rest area. They had a little creek. It's right outside of Price, um, mm -hmm. Utah. So this is still in Utah. Right. And this somewhat, this gentleman there, he was just a homeless person in the middle of the desert. And uh, I'm not sure if it was a person or not. What do you think? I'm not going to comment on that at this time. Yeah, I just, I mean, how could anybody be in the middle of the desert like that? And uh, I don't recall their name, but this is our hostess, Marion. Yes, that's Marion. You'll meet her at another time. She uh, is the president of the Vegetarian Society of Colorado. And then this is also Grand Junction in a replica of the space shuttle. Um, I mean, UFO, space shuttle, very appropriate. And it was given to us to the children. That was pretty interesting, I thought. Little plants and shows the things that they're growing in there. And the local television group crew was there, so we arrived just in time. And the uh, reason we found it, as usual, like, got turned around and lost. <laughs> yeah, so we want to share that with you. Cool, no? Pretty cool. From what I gather, they had tours to there all day long. And um, we got there sort of in the middle of the day. And this is Andy's place. Do you remember Andy? This is Andy's place, mm -hmm. yes. He has a third world shop in Grand, in Grand Junction. He sells hats, and there you go. Uh, he he donated the hat I'm wearing today. He said I needed a new one, and there it is. And he has masks and very unique items, jewelry, carvings. Yeah. Yes, Andy. Did you not buy an elephant there? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I bought a soapstone elephant, and uh, the reason I bought it was because he called me out, so I bought him and brought him home with me. It took me two days to get him to tell me his name, mm -hmm. and his name is Ramu. Mm -hmm. And today we broke him, didn't we? Today I dropped him and broke his leg off, so I have to repair that, or he would have been here with us today. With us today, yeah. Yeah. And uh, just a neat little shop. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Ju jewelry and music and just a real good atmosphere, and he just happened to be there loading up something. Um, as we arrived, we would have missed them, but here again, synchronicity. We ended up getting there just on time. Talking drum, now. We will go into details about this story after this clip. This is the RV that we eventually ended up with yes. in Hotchkiss with a lady named Carol, and we will tell you that story. And um, this is... Um, this is my truck. Uh, that we ended up taking on the trip. Pretty, these are the 1999 crop circles that were available to us. So we made a makeshift cropper. And um, they had just came in on the internet and um, people stopped us and mm -hmm. asked questions. And So when it was all said and done, I was happy we had the truck because it had an overdrive. <laughs> yes, yeah. it helped going down hills. <laughs> it did. Mm -hmm. This is a view from Carol's house overlooking Grand Junction. Very beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. view she had. Yeah, beautiful. I had been there the year before on the other side of this canyon there at, at a different mesa. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Just a beautiful place. It was. Pretty, huh? You see, if you ever go to Grand Junction, you have to come back. And a Native American told me, if you don't want to come back, you have to take a little earth with you, and then it's your choice. And I have done that. So now I don't have to go all the time. I just now go by choice. Yeah. And when it rains in Grand Junction, the raindrops are so big, it just... Um, this is a little guy named Nick that you met on the show, um, Indigo Children, and that is a display at the uh, lecture hall that we um, that we spoke and we did readings. Mm -hmm. This was a very unique picture. The head to the right, the first head from the casket was the lady that was actually in the casket, mm -hmm. and all these other ghosts appeared in the picture. That was the door prize. Of course, we didn't win it, or else we would have brought it. That's the gentleman that, that whose creation this is. I forgot what he called it, but and uh, they use these two for toning and mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And this, you might recognize him. This is Randolph Winter giving a lecture. He's the gentleman that. Uh, wrote um, the Palladian books that um, Elena Smith I had on the show and and, uh, and and myself he wrote the Billy Meyer story and he just happened to come in there and as little Nick he was tired and a, a gentleman a Native American that nobody knew who he was and um, he wasn't feeling well you, you was really having a hard time right mm -hmm. So I went in that evening and they was teaching um, people how to dance and sing uh, Tibetan songs and, and things like that. And it just give you an idea of all the speakers that were there and I don't know their names, uh, but they were just dancing and, and having a good time. Uh, one of the men is... Uh, one with the colored shirt on is Fred Palver that you will meet. He had a UFO encounter at the Hopi Reservation and his wife. And uh, the, uh, the, the taller gentleman there to the, to the side, he did aura photos and his wife, uh, she talked about angels. Um, I don't feel, and the lady in the blue, that was the, our host. And Ulrich was her name. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. I don't remember half of the people. I don't remember a lot of their names either. Yes, they were all very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's what, uh, that was Fred Paul and Nick. And this is a lady named Ada, the, um, the Eagle Lady. And, and you will meet her in an upcoming show. There was the fairgrounds behind her. That's where we was parked. And oh, this is the rock shop outside Crystals is what we mm -hmm. were filming there. This is outside of Salida, on the other side of Monarch Pass. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, the lady started yelling, "You the one, you the one!" Yeah. Remember? <laughs> she had read about her shop in the, in the book that I wrote, and the moral of the story is, and mm -hmm. also she had seen. Clips. I have used clips of her shop on um, on the show Rocky Road, and somebody had sent her a copy. And the Colorado people started coming and buying crystals and things. So she was really excited. Remember? Yes, she was. She made us come back, didn't she? Yep. She mm -hmm. said we would be back. <laughs> this is the Arkansas River. So we're now 30 miles away from Florence, Colorado. Our next stop. Isn't that beautiful? They sold the uh, crystals by from pound. By the pound. Mm -hmm. okay. And you'll meet her. Her name is Denise. Uh, her and her husband Martin have a, a shop. This is Martin there. And you will meet them in an upcoming interview. 
We have a metaphysical store in Florence, Colorado. And that's some of the stuff they have in there. Um, I really like this angel. Mm -hmm. And they have drums from Peru and some kind of new drum that um, somebody brought in. I forgot the name of it. That's my favorite. jewelry and toning bowls. That's the drum. Do you remember what they called it? The bowl drum? No. These are the drums from Peru. Oh, no, they're just the square one they called it something. No, I don't. He had so many different ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are from Peru. And then here we are in Pueblo uh, at the UFO Institute of Colorado. This is Electra. You will meet her in an upcoming interview. And then I have a blank again. Uh, I can't acknowledge their names, can you? Uh, That's no. the moon. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a very beautiful moon that night. Mm -hmm. the, the camera doesn't show it, but it was beautiful, very different. Well, my camera was broke by then. And so it didn't come in too great. Now, this right. is on the way back again, uh, heading towards Monarch Pass. Uh, Monarch is 14,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And um, it was under construction? Yes, it, when we got on the top, we mm -hmm. had to sit there. It was very low oxygen up there. Mm -hmm. Well, I was happy because they couldn't go over 30 miles an hour, so that was. Yeah, that was fine. That was fine with us. Me, yeah. <laughs> because you can't really go too fast. Um, just a beautiful view here. Yeah, and here they, they're speeding up a little bit. Um, oh, that's a little out of sequence, but this is right outside of Price, Utah, right before you get to that, that one area that we showed you, uh, where the Native Americans went. Now, this is Blue Mesa. It was absolutely beautiful, the most beautiful place on earth that I've ever seen. Everybody should go to Colorado at least once to mm -hmm. see that. Yeah. And my mother passed away two years ago and I had, this uh, this coming down Monarch, what, 20 miles an hour. Um, and now to get back to the Blue Mesa here for a minute, I had left my mother's ashes there because I thought she might like that. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? I was happy that I could save that. You filmed that, so a little here and a little there. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. There's a reservoir there. And, um, and then we got off the highway a little bit um, to go way up in the mountains, back towards Hotkiss. Yes. Mm -hmm. No traffic. Um, you'll see the road on the other side there uh, is like a, like a snake. Uh, you see the boat coming down? And then you just run into it again. How many cars do you think we saw in 60 miles? Oh, maybe 25, maybe. 25 cars in 60 miles? Probably. I remember four. That's that little road where we went way up in the mountains. You know, uh, where you could see all the way around? Oh, yes. There was only four on that car, uh, that road. Yeah. Okay, I was speaking of a different mountain. Yeah. And you, you drive like 30 miles an hour and you don't have a problem speeding. Oh, and there was a... <laughs> you tell us. This is Salt Lake City. We were driving down the freeway. Lillian said, what's this? And I said, what? I looked and it was a boat. <laughs> We just couldn't believe it, pulling a little trailer. Yeah. And he had so his little helmet on and everything. <laughs> he did, there he goes. <laughs> we told your husband and he said? He said, you've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> we <even> told him. <laughs> um, now we are in Union, in Union, Oregon, and that is it's, uh, kind of setting us up for an upcoming show when we talk about the ghosts at Hot Lake. This is the house of the founder of Union. 
that is said to be the richest man, was the richest man in Western, uh, Eastern Oregon. Uh -huh. We had found crop circles there two years earlier, and um, so that is what we think is a crop circle. It has not been authenticated, those things take a little while, but I am of the belief that that is a crop circle. Because the people said, um, no wind or anything, so. Right, they hadn't had any. It was pretty large, but we couldn't make out the formation of it. Mm -hmm. So I will get back to you on that, um, as far as it being authentic. And then it was late in the season also, and they were like, three different pieces to this, so on an area you could probably see um, some kind of shape. It was huge, huh? Oh, it was. Mm -hmm. And then we went into this building that night, and um, this is Soap Lake. Sanitarium. Hot Lake. Hot Lake Sanitarium. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we will do a whole show on that and make you get you acquainted with that and show you how we ended up doing a ghost hunt. The lake had a natural hot springs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this is Eastern Washington. And on the other side of those little hills, of course, is Washington State. That was a quick trip in 15 days, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And the trip home, the rest of it was pretty uneventful. We got home in time and um, we had a really, really, really good time. This, this picture I'm holding here has nothing to do with our trip, but I wanted to share it with you. A few weeks ago, something was sitting on Mount Rainier. Mm -hmm. uh, it could have been a cloud. It, in my opinion, it didn't look like a cloud. My son and my family went to Mount Rainier that day and they caught this picture here. And um, it really looks like they caught something. And so I wanted to share that with you. So you be the judge. Looks like a... It looks like something. <laughs> looks like something. Mm -hmm. And Kanashiba Shan was on the bus and she watched it take off. She did. Yes, she said. And of course, clouds don't take off. No. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So, should we start in Olympia again and talk about some of the people and some of the emotions that we had? Would you like that? Um, we could. Do mm -hmm. you want to get started on it? Um. You can start with it. Okay, well, we went on our way, and um, of course, Tammy didn't know any of the people that we was going to run into, so... Right. You had, you had a high trust level here, assuming I wasn't going to... Back out. <laughs> well, I was going to back out, um, you know. Right. But, but the thing is here, sometimes when you just take off and... See, I'm used to picking up and just leaving. Right. Mm -hmm, so, but um, it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. Taking the truck, then the RV, mm -hmm. then it was back to the truck and mm -hmm. fitting everything in there. It was quite a job. We and had a mm -hmm. canopy, but and I was very unhappy. Yes, you wanted your RV. I wanted my <laughs> RV because we we kind of go together. Yes. So when we got to um, Grand Junction, I had a note from a gentleman named Bill Ramsey mm -hmm. telling us we had to go to breakfast, remember? Yes. Mm -hmm. We had to meet a lady by the name of Carol. So um, I wasn't feeling very good that mm -hmm. day. So I said, why don't you go ahead and go? Mm -hmm. And you could tell it from there. Okay, well, uh, it, it was the day before we did go to breakfast, but we didn't stay very long. Oh, at mm -hmm. the, okay. And then we yes. went to meet Andy at his shop. Right. And then I went to Denny's. Yes. And I'm still complaining about not having my copper. Yes. So the lady said, well, that's not a problem. Why don't you take mine? Right. But you got to have it back on Friday. Right. And I said, no, can't have it on Friday. I'll bring it back on Sunday. And of course, she needed it. 
So she went with us. She went with us. Mind you, this lady did not know us from Adam. At all. Was going to let us take her RV. Mm -hmm. But she went with us. She went with us. She got her cropper. Mm -hmm. She got to stay in. She had three beds in there. It was mm -hmm. just perfect. She ended up being a wonderful woman. She was. And uh, we really had a nice time. And we were all smokers. I want to say that because mm -hmm. we were very happy about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the conference was very, uh, very nice. Uh, Vandolf Winters dropped in for a couple hours. That was a surprise to everyone. Yes. We met the youngest handwriting expert. Yes, the youngest handwriting expert in, in the world. Mm -hmm. That was Nicholas. And uh, he was very, very accurate. He's 11. Yes, 11 years old. We interviewed him on the show Indigo, mm -hmm. so the defense um, um, will get familiar with them. Yes. Then several people came about missing persons. Mm-hmm. And do you want to show the picture of this yeah, girl? Yeah, I can. Uh, you helped me with the missing persons. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was the first person had left, not in a conventional way, but the mother right. was okay with that. And then we would like to acknowledge um, Sherry Lynn Espinosa. Espinosa. Mm -hmm. She had been missing for some time, and the mother came to visit with us, and uh, unfortunately, she's she's passed over. She's mm -hmm. passed over, but we did locate her body. Yes, we did, and uh, she's in the the Blue Mesa. At the Blue Mesa in the lake, but by the dam area. Mm -hmm. And um, we we both did separate analysis on what happened to her, but it was. It was pretty close, but one of us had a few more things and the other one had a few different things, mm -hmm. but I think combined they all happened. Now, like I said, I left my mother's remains at the Blue Mesa. Yes. And then as we were leaving, as we were leaving there, uh, I wanted a hamburger. Somebody I said, I want a hamburger. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't like hamburgers. No, I don't like hamburgers. So we went to uh, Gunnison and I ate a hamburger. And later uh, we talked to her mother and she said, oh, she wanted extra pickles. Yes, and you had pickles, on, extra pickles on the side. And That's what mother, I ordered. Mm -hmm. Her mother said she liked it. We relieved her at the Blue Mesa also. Yeah. So we said a few words and so we have acknowledged her. Mm-hmm. The friends in Colorado know Loretta mm -hmm. and her brother, Al, Al mm -hmm. Koslavich, and he's the photographer that furnished our opening shot today. Yes, he's a very wonderful photographer. Mm -hmm. He has beautiful pictures. Mm -hmm. We ended up being on the radio. Yes. And they said that had never done, be, you know, never happened before. And mind you, this was a radio station that wouldn't even allow the word tattoo to tattoo. be used. Tattoo, yes. exactly. We talked about mutilations and mm -hmm. the Zoom club and all kinds of things. Yes, and Loretta was, she's elderly and on mm -hmm. oxygen, and she just wanted to do everything for us. She wouldn't let us do anything, but we let her because it made her feel good to do things. And we stayed at her house for four or five nights. She was wonderful. We did. Well, but you see, the thing is here, it was sort of hard for us to let her do things for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we make these trips, we have lessons, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think one of them was for me to let people, allow people to... C take care of us. She was mothering us, but... She was. It made her happy, so... She was. We weren't even allowed to do the dishes. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. But um, she was wonderful. One wonderful lady. Now, mm -hmm. my director, his name is Justin, and usually when we go on these trips, I always ask, is there anything I can bring you back? And Justin wanted... He wanted a grasshopper, of all things. He did. Mm -hmm. So we were speaking to Loretta about that, and Loretta mm -hmm. even caught the grasshopper and put it in a jar. <laughs> he did, and so if we managed to get Herbie home. Uh, that's what Justin named him, Herbie the Love Bug. And he sort of became, uh, in his short his life, mascot. he became the mascot. So, mm -hmm. but we want to show you this is an, this is an announcement from, 
from Justin show dance or dance and this is uh, Herbie yes yeah, see I'm moving this too much here yeah, let me try it like that this is Herbie not good just a minute here now we got it this is Herbie on the uh, Thanksgiving table mm-hmm so he got immortalized I thought that was so cute yes yeah. <laughs> but we worried about that but yes. all the way home, didn't Making we? sure he stayed alive. Yeah, he did. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, when we arrived at Union, Oregon, we visited a... I'm ahead of myself. Let's go to Pueblo. Okay. There were lots of people in Pueblo that I had never met before. Right. And we were sitting we were sitting there waiting for the rest of the people to arrive in this essence came mm. up the driveway mm -hmm. do you remember mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes it was electra electra mm -hmm. electra is a lady from south Carol north south carolina that mm -hmm. um we've introduced you to her work she does grid work and it was so wonderful oh she was very wonderful i believe she was 82 years 82. old mm -hmm. and she was getting ready to make a trip to i don't rio recall. de janeiro Yes. She told us she was old when she was 40. She did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she felt wonderful now. Yeah. And we got an interview and just before my camera broke, so mm -hmm. uh, we will share that with you. And then we had some experiences in Florence, um, our little uh, time jumpers. Would you like to go there? I'm not sure I recall which time you're speaking of. Uh, okay. We had quite a few. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. Well, at, at first when we needed to get to Florence by 5 o'clock right. because nobody had a phone. So we said, you got to stay open, you got to stay open. Oh, yes, Martin. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made it there, what, two or three minutes before 5? Before 5, and he, he saw the new we were coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, stopped at the post office, and the lady said, you don't have any mail today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And then over to the tavern, and the uh, guy said, well, I dumped the coffee. Let me move my car. He had just assumed that we had the coffee. And right. They'd be staying there. That we would be staying there. Mm -hmm. In order to get to Pueblo, we had to go back and forth to Florence. Right. So we came down a windy road, and um, I pulled over. Do you remember why I pulled over? Yes. I said, why are you pulling over? She said... Well, you said to let these cars behind us go around us. And I looked and I said, what cars? There was no cars there. Mm -hmm. But you had seen them in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And then I believe it was the next night, it was dark out and there was two cars behind us. We both witnessed it. Mm -hmm. We went around a corner, there was no side roads for them to go. And they were completely gone in that same stretch of road that we were on before. Yeah, so that kind of reminded us of 101, go to Aberdeen. So we talked to some yes. of the locals, and they said that happens all the time. Quite often there, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Then the other thing we did, um, we ate a lot. We ate a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. We called, um, we called Justin Show and gave mm -hmm. a report when we could. Loretta, she was cooking for loggers, I think. She, she did, yeah, yeah. didn't she? <laughs> Making big, humongous meals, there's no way. And I don't want no leftovers, she would tell us. Mm -hmm. But she was wonderful. When we was in Idaho, one of the things, uh, speaking of time jumps, let's, mm -hmm. uh, let's stay with the time jumps. Okay. If you like to tell the friends uh, what happened to us when we got to Idaho. Now, this is going you know, on the, on the way on to the way. Colorado. Well, it was taking us a long time to get mm -hmm. through. Normally, it would take half the amount of time is what it did. But the mile markers, one of them would say 18, the next one might say 20. Um, they weren't in sequence like they were mm -hmm. supposed to be, and that's when we were noticing what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me about an exit that you had went off to get gas. Mm -hmm. I don't recall what the number was, but there was no exit of that such number. So I had reached in the back, you were driving, I got your book out that you mm -hmm. wrote, and I was looking up that part where you were in that area. And everything just kept happening. P 
page by page of what you had wrote about two years previous two years to previous. this time. Mm -hmm. And at one point on that freeway, it showed that we had to exit off to continue on that highway, which there was never an exit. We just continued straight. Mm -hmm. um, lots of strange things happened, but uh, we finally made it through. <laughs> We, we, we did, and then the other thing happened, uh, like I said, when we take these trips, sometimes uh, there's really more to it than just taking a trip. Yes. And then at one time, uh, we had a, you, you was having a hard time because you had sort of a, a, a family emergency. Yes, that was mm -hmm. in uh, Hotchkiss. We were in Hotchkiss. Mm -hmm. And I had a family emergency. Mm -hmm. I had a choice of going home or continuing on, and uh, I decided I wouldn't make it home in time anyways, mm -hmm. so I decided to stay. And at the same time, when you had wrote the book two years ago, you had a family crisis, and Maybe you had to make the same choice, mm -hmm. yes. So it was very, everything was very similar. Yes, yeah, um, it's, it's like we, we, we So I kept the asking trip. her, what's on the next page, so we knew <laughs> what was gonna happen next. Yeah. But, um, it was a it was a very good journey. Um, mm -hmm. it really, was wonderful. As a as as a whole, it's like I said, you know, I'm very used to synchronicity, and I just sort of go with that. Right. Um, a lot of lessons there for you. Oh yes, every day something happened. Mm -hmm. Every day, it was just wonderful. Um, you know, with Carol with the RV, mm -hmm. and this time jumping thing in Idaho that was was kind of freaky actually because when we did see a mile marker that was in sequence so we'd say okay we're yeah, right oh, we're yeah, still we're, here really excited. <laughs> but yes. now on the way back something else happened in Idaho I'm trying to remember what that was we had so many things it took happen us two to us. hours to get through yeah to get through Idaho. It took us two hours to drive from one end to the state to the other. Right, and it shouldn't have taken us that long. I mean, it should have taken a little longer than that. A little that, longer, less than seven, eight hours or nine hours, but exactly, but more than. Right. M but more than two hours. Oh, yes. Uh, right yeah. after the boat um, mm -hmm. in Salt Lake, the freeway was closed. Yes. And we had to detour, detour, detour. I'm, we must have had to turn 10 or 15 different blocks. Yeah. But it took us out of the way for a reason. Mm -hmm. There had been uh, a tornado there. Mm -hmm. And they, people still had the rubbish all over the streets. They cleaned up from their houses. And um, I believe that we were taken that way to see that. Yeah, the, the, the energy was so heavy. It was very depressing. Yeah, um, you could just feel it. And it was here. It, it was like a month after after the tornado. Yes. And, and just the hopelessness. Uh, they were just sitting there eating lunch in a in an empty lot. You know. Yeah, it's just like they'd given up. Mm -hmm. Almost. It was really. It was uh, something. And and every time we'd ask somebody the directions to get back. They would take us to another place, more of the tornado destruction mm -hmm. that we needed to see. So that was, I guess we were supposed to see that. Also, my finger was purple. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. um, we did not have any purple markers or pins in our vehicle. Um, you woke up one morning and you had, I believe it was the middle finger on the inside, one, you had yeah. purple and it would not wash off. You tried to wash it off several times. And we had went to breakfast that morning mm -hmm. and most everybody there had purple clothes on. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that at the time my friend Gypsy Hurley did I talk about very often the purple lady. Yes, it had the wonderful stories uh, connected with her passing. Um, she was trying to tell us something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and um, then, of course, you with your medium shop. Yes, um, she did on the on way, mm -hmm. on the way home. There was a message she was trying to get across to you. So, mm -hmm. if you had anything to um, tell the friends. Mm -hmm about lessons or anything at all, what would it be? 
about lessons, I feel that people should listen to their inner selves and go with their first instinct. Mm -hmm. And I believe that people should connect amongst their neighbors as a whole, love their neighbors as they do their selves. Um, I think that's really coming to where we need to do that more and more all the time. Mm -hmm. We sort of did this whole thing backwards here, like everything else. Um, lots of times we look back on things. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just occurred to me, we didn't talk about how we met. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a year ago, the, uh, this September, the 1st mm -hmm. of September, we were at a psychic show uh, in Kent, Washington, and mm -hmm. we met that way. So, and we've been very connected ever since. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of experiences and wonderful things and sad things, and but we've been uh, very connected. When we went to the Cooney Mansion mm -hmm. uh, and taped the uh, finally June Kaba story, yes, you had an experience. Yes, I did on the way home mm -hmm. that evening. Um, I was not a medium until that evening. At that time, yeah. I was psychic, but not a mm -hmm. medium. And on the way home, um, June Kaba, which has been dead for quite a few years, she came into my body and started talking. And it was, I wasn't scared, but I had a feeling of what it was, but it was, um, all I could think of was I need to get to a phone to call mm -hmm. you to tell you what happened. And I did. And um, she wanted to make sure that you were thanked and Jim was thanked mm -hmm. for, for telling her story because she had been waiting all these years. And then she was going to rest and I seen her, her go away and she was crying and it was very, very interesting. And since then, I've been able to speak to the dead. Um, I can call him in and speak with him. It's very neat. It, it, it's very moving when you see, um, you know, when people come and make appointments and things, they are day one person, and then usually after an experience like that, when they leave, they somebody else. They're somebody else, mm -hmm. exactly. Then when we got to Union, we was trying to get out of Union. And yeah, but... Um, we had to stay one night. I wish we could have stayed another night, mm -hmm. but um, we couldn't. But Union, we're going to save that for another, yeah, another time. But I do want to go to the, um, to the area where we were ready to leave. Mm -hmm. And these people stopped us because they wanted to, um, they wanted to talk to us. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you remember the lady? I can't remember her name. Um, she, she worked at the hotel. Uh, the manager? No, the, the, the cleaning lady. Um, no, I can't I don't remember, remember her name, her name um, but the whole point is she was, she said we had been put there for a reason and uh, she was going to a lot of trouble. And yes. uh, so we really made a difference. Yeah, we each had, uh, I think you did her, give her a reading and mm -hmm. I did her daughter. <coughs> Excuse me, but they they both needed needed the reading. Needed somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And Pablo was the same way. Mm -hmm. and had several appointments and there were several people that um, were very suicidal. They had very, you know, some had just lost a loved exactly. one and um, I think we were very helpful to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then um, my centerpiece here is a lamp that uh, I got from the lady at the rock shop that we showed you, and it's um, it's onyx, white onyx, mm -hmm. and it's real heavy, and it gets so hot, you know. And that's why you got your beautiful... Yes, my ball, my green ball, I call it. It represents to me the universe. The big circle is, is the Earth and all the other planets and galaxies out there. That's... Um, but I, I needed that ball. Mm -hmm. And when we went through there, Unfortunately, I didn't have the money the first time, mm -hmm. and the lady said, you're going to make money and you'll be back. Well, I only had, was it $35? Mm -hmm. And that's how much the ball cost. So I, I spent the $35, and then I ended up getting it back the next day for a reading, so it worked out just great. <laughs> it was more than one day because we was almost home. 
Was it? Well, you, were, you were, you um, were. Yeah, it was. We were almost home. Okay. And so, so, you know, if we have faith in things, uh, mm -hmm. everything is just the way it's supposed to be. It happens, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. If I was to say to you tomorrow, let's go, would you? You bet. I wouldn't <laughs> hesitate. <laughs> um, when we have guides and we, we have discussed guides, sometimes they ask us to do things that seem sort of a little bit impossible. Right. But just go with it because you never know where it takes you. Exactly. You mm -hmm. have to do what, what your guide tells you to do. Mm -hmm. And there's always a reason for it behind it. Yeah, throw away your logic because logic don't get you anywhere. No. Mm -hmm. But we're all put here to either teach somebody mm -hmm. or to learn a lesson. And um, we just have to do what we're told to do. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to go with me next year, but I guarantee you we will have a cropper next year. Yeah, I plan on going part of the ways, and then mm -hmm. I can fly, fly in and fly back out for a while. So if I was to be gone for four months, I think I've met enough people that I go from one town to the next town oh, and yes. so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, we counted up on that trip how many people touched our hearts. That's a good point. And wasn't it 15? people and that's a lot of people and um, these are all people that we'll always stay in contact with mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're just lifelong friends yeah and and I keep in mind we met hundreds of people oh yes so we don't know how many we touched those are just the ones that touched our that hearts touched between us, us. Mm -hmm. so one person a day that's pretty good and it was one person a day mm -hmm. exactly and we reflected um, in uh, at first in the Hotchkiss. At the end of the evening, we would sit and reflect. Mm-hmm. And I had some challenges. There was a lady there I wasn't very fond of. And when it was time to go, I we uh, thanked the universe for being kind. And I hadn't blown my lid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be able to keep her cool. Um, mm -hmm. And right about then. <laughs> She doubled back on me, and uh, yeah, she came back with another story. But um, you managed to make it through without blowing up. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes a uh, universe tests us more than once. Yes. And I said, that's it. If she comes back one more time, I'm gonna lose it. And we ordained four ministers. Yes. We did. Um, got ordained, mm -hmm. and um, so that was very nice. And we was told to look for a scientist. Do you remember that? Yes. We, we don't have time for that. It's the last story. We okay. Was there was a gentleman that we met, mm -hmm. and I can't reveal his name, mm -hmm. but he he had told us that we needed to go find this scientist. Mm -hmm. He told us the road he lived on, but we had not a clue where this man lived. Right. <laughs> so we went and drove down this road, and the first house we came to was a retired sheriff of that town, wouldn't mm -hmm. you know? So he told us where the scientist lived, and we went there. And uh, of course, this scientist studied frequency levels. But mm -hmm. when we got there, he acted like he didn't know anything he didn't about know it. Anything. He said he studied bugs, insects. Mm -hmm. So, but then we sound we seen a couple things that um, proved that he were studying frequencies. So. And we were followed after that. <laughs> for, oh, the for police were following yeah. us everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we must have seen eight cop cars and mm -hmm. how long a time? Jeez, not even an hour. It was just a very little, very, very little town. Yeah. But I mean, here, but here again, when, when you follow your instructions, says you go and do this, and mm -hmm. we said we're looking for a scientist. No, we don't know his name, but... Um, you're supposed to deal with that, and then you just go from house to house. That's, that's what we did, but we found him. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we found him. Yes, so. we did. So if there's a lesson in there, just follow your... Your instincts. Your instincts. Actually, it's your guide talking to you, but a lot of people don't recognize that. But um, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So if it says look up, look up. Look up. Uh, but, you know, as long as you're not driving yourself. Well, just with my crisis there, I... Mm -hmm. I wanted to go home, but I was told to stay on my path that I was on, so mm -hmm. I did that. So it's, um, I, I hope we shared a little um, light on this quick trip, and it, it was quick, 
trip back yes. and forth, back and forth. And um, next year, hopefully, I'm going to be gone, you know, longer. Longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just take you right along. Yes. And, um, well, it's going to snow. Oh, it's going to uh, snow. And I had, had mentioned to you that um, I would have my answer. Uh, about the Navajo clock that when yes. it snowed, uh, this is a cliffhanger because then our time's up. And what happened is it was 90 degrees. When we got to Union, Oregon to Hot Lake, it was snowing. It was snowing in the mountains, and we find, found out that Bothell had a great, it looked, looked like winter time, and it had. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? Hail? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, next time we're going to explain to you why why it snowed. Um, for us, we would like to believe it was for us. So. Right, I think it mm -hmm. was. Well, Lillian, thank you for having me on your show. That's pretty good, huh? It was very nice. I had and you have to come along again. And um, yes, I will. You have a safe trip home. Well, thank you. Okay, bye.